For the longest time, I was absolutely sure that booty means boobs, which is like so not true. <laughs> Today I'm gonna start this video with a disclaimer. If you're under 18 or just don't want to hear me talking about, then click off this video right now. I'll wait. For those who stayed, welcome! Today I'm gonna talk about informal vocabulary and slang from a Princess Rap Battle. Princess Rap Battle is a series of videos on YouTube created by amazingly talented Whitney Avalon, who is a YouTuber, a singer, and an actress. The premise of this video is pretty simple. We have Cinderella from Cinderella and Belle from Beauty and the Beast who are trying to destroy each other with words. I'm gonna read the lyrics line by line and explain everything. And you can find the link to the original video in the description down below. Let's dive in. Another princess and my shadow come to covet my crown. You clowns wanna throw down with the best in a gown. This was Cinderella's line. She's talking about coveting her crown. So to covet, means to want something very, very much. She talks about, you guys covered my crown. You desire to steal this crown from me. So to covet means to want something very, very much, especially if this something belongs to someone else. So you can covet an award. You can covet an Oscar if you're an actress or an actor. You can covet power or there is this line in the Bible, something along the lines, you shouldn't covet your neighbor's wife. So don't desire your neighbor's wife. Throw down means to street fight. It's a word that is informal, it's slang. So you probably won't use it in daily conversations, but it's something that is really nice to know. So you throw down with somebody, you street fight with somebody. And this word originated from the times when knights were throwing down this gauntlet, this mitten, <laughs> this iron mitten on the floor, on the ground, so that like I challenge you, I'm, pro I'm throwing down this gauntlet on the ground <laughs> so I can fight with you. And a gown is a dress, a long beautiful dress. You can have a wedding gown or an evening gown. So women wear gowns if the event is very, very formal. I'm the legendary story of rags to riches. Rhymes sharper than a needle and I'm giving out stitches, huh? The rags to riches story is a story when a person starts out as poor and then at the end of the story, he or she becomes very rich. So Cinderella is kind of the ultimate rags to riches story. Giving out stitches means get to give out something is to actually give something to each person in a group. Students can give out leaflets to everybody in the street, <laughs> but giving out stitches, here she's rhyming, crown with gown, and those rhymes are so sharp uh, that they can injure you, that you'll need stitches after that. She's giving out stitches. Like a wilting rose, you can't step to my flows. These girls are tripping, did they cut off their toes? A wilting rose is sadly an old and kind of dead rose. If a rose or any other plant is wilting, it's dry, it's like drooping, it's old. Yeah, it's an allusion to the rose uh, from Beauty and the Beast. Step to my flows. Flow is an interesting word, is an uninterrupted speech or writing. It's when you're like writing, 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 or speaking, 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 and it's flow. 
It's this continuous stream of your speaking. Like you can say, I didn't want to interrupt her flow, so I said nothing. Then tripping. This word is interesting. Here we have a pun or double meaning. <laughs> mm, a person can trip if he or she cuts her toes. So, um, did they cut off their toes? In the original Cinderella, Cinderella's sisters did cut off their toes so that they could uh, place their feet into this Cinderella's shoe, which was really disgusting. And I'm glad it wasn't in the original, like in the movie or in the cartoon. And tripping can also mean having this drug effect on you. Like if you try LCD, LSD, <laughs> if you try LSD or something, you can be tripping. I deserve all the praise for the food fetish craze. I've got itty bitty kicks but legs for days. Itty bitty means tiny or itsy bitsy. It's a synonym. There is also a nursery rhyme. It's a bit a spider, a tiny, tiny spider. And legs for days means really beautiful, gorgeous legs. I've got legs for days. Let's look at your mentality. Freud loves your abnormality. The Stockholm Syndrome story, beauty and the bestiality. Of course, you're bitter. I'm the number one star. Pumpkin carriage, perfect marriage. No one cares who you are. Beauty and the Beast is often being accused of Stockholm Syndrome. That Belle has developed the Stockholm Syndrome while she was taken prisoner by the Beast. Um, Stockholm Syndrome is the situation when you're taken hostage or like a prisoner and then you start um, trusting and developing this connection with your jailer. It's not a, uncommon in situations as like taking hostages. What's my name, Belle? What's it mean, beauty? And the perfect combination of brains and booty. For the longest time, I was absolutely sure that booty means boobs, which is like so not true. <laughs> They're like the opposite things in your body. You have uh, your boobs up here and your booty down there. So your booty is your backside or your bum, your buttocks. <laughs> well, I'm gaining knowledge, you're losing your pumps. Like Mrs. Putz, I'm serving shots and dishing out lumps. Pumps are women's strapless shoes. And dish out lumps, dish out, you give something out to a group of people, often in a careless way. So you dish out lumps, and lump is a, like a bump, <laughs> especially in your head if you strike something, like a door, <laughs> then you can have a lump on your head. So Belle is trying to dish out lumps. Cindy's dreaming she's important. Well, somebody should wake her. This gold digging trophy wife's the royal baby maker. A gold digger and a trophy wife are not very great expressions to use when it comes to real people. However, I probably need to explain them. So a gold digger or a gold digging person is a person, usually a beautiful woman, who uses her beauty and her appeal to take money from rich men. And a trophy wife is a beautiful young woman who is married to pretty old rich dude. Something like that. Fear the nerdy wordy princess cause I'm throwing more shade than the willow tree growing on your dead mother's grave. To throw shade and somebody means to criticize them publicly. Usually people throw shade in other people on YouTube and Twitter. It's very commonplace there. You tell us all this time sets us back 50 years. Do your chores, clean the floors till a man just appears? You're shallow and obsessed. 
with looks and how you dress, you want to live like Gaston? Please be our guest. Belle here talks about feminism and women's rights. So she's talking about Cinderella, that this story has set us back 50 years. Like it's still 1950s, I guess. <laughs> like when women weren't allowed to do many things. And she's talking about this thing has set us back. So if something sets us back, it means that we're having a delay in the progress or development of something. So this illness had set me back a few weeks. I couldn't finish my work in time. And a shallow person is a person who only thinks about his or her looks. So appearances is what's important for this person. And Gaston is one of those characters in Beauty and the Beast who is like the epitome of shallow. <laughs> oh, I'm the one who's shallow because your prince was really hairy. The beast was in the friend zone till he gave you his library. Your points have no merit. You're jealous, declare it. Like I've always said, if the shoe fits, wear it. Merit is a good quality that makes someone or something deserve praise. If something has no merit, then it's no good. Or if, if something has merit, then it's really good. So this suggestion has some merits. Or your points have no merit. They're no, no good. <laughs> if the shoe fits, wear it. Or... In the UK, they say, if the cap fits, wear it. It's an idiom, and it's used when you want to say that um, the criticism is about you is actually true, or I think it's true. Like, the person might say, I'm not a liar. And you say, oh, if the shoe fits, wear it. I'm the American dream with a fairy tale wedding. You've got teapots for friends, and I think your man's shedding. Some things are meant to be like love at first sight. Bibbidi bobbidi booey, he was mine before midnight. If an animal is shedding, it means it loses its hair. So your dog or cat can shed, <laughs> can be shedding. Or even a snake, though a snake will lose its skin, not hair. And bibbidi bobbidi booey is something from. Cinderella. So when Cinderella got her beautiful gown and those wonderful shoes from her fairy godmother, fairy godmother said something like bibbidi babbidi boo or bibbidi babbidi boo. I don't remember. But here it's bibbidi babbidi booya. And booya is something that people say after they want something when they're very, very excited. Like maybe I won in cards and I say like, yeah, or booyah, <laughs> I've won. <laughs> That's great, booyah. <laughs> A relationship rookie wants to rap about romance. You can't fall in love after just one dance. My prince saved my life and don't be misled. I want a man in the street, but a beast in the bed. A rookie is a novice. It's when you start doing your job and you're new to it. So you can, you can um, be a rookie policeman or a relationship rookie if you hadn't dated someone before you started dating this person. And to mislead somebody is to give them actually kind of false information or not give them a person enough information and you kind of fool this person. So don't be misled. Don't be fooled. Don't be misled by appearances. Don't be fooled by appearances. They don't matter. Your film stars mice and cats with an old fat fairy. Your silly story is shoehorned into freaking Tom and Jerry. You say you want a party next you run off down the halls. It's like you always choke once you make it to the balls. To shoehorn something, is to fit something in a very tight place that does not belong there. 
and you can actually shoehorn a building between two buildings or you can shoehorn one story into another and it really shows to make it to something means you're there on time i made it or i made it to this meeting i was so afraid i will be late <laughs> but i'm not i made it but uh, here when you make it to the balls it can mean like you make it to this ball this event or the balls like the person's balls it's like you always choke once you make it to the balls they're talking about oral sex you think that's funny here's a history lesson honey my movie said the studio when Walt was out of money. You followed in my footsteps. Without me, there's no you. Disney built an empire in these tiny glass shoes. To follow in somebody's footsteps means to live in the same way or have the same job as someone before you, especially your parents. My father was expecting me to follow in his footsteps and become a lawyer. I didn't. <laughs> If you're so adored, where's your Academy Award? I'm the smart female heroine that can't be ignored. The moral of our quarrel and why I've got you beat, it's what's inside that matters, not the size of your feet. An Academy Award is an Oscar. And I've got you beat means I've won. I've fought you and I've won. I've got you beat. You're beaten. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time with some awesome language content.